Hi again, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. Art and I are very pleased again to bring you Dr. Liz Lister. Hi, Dr. Liz. Hi, how are you doing? Great, great. Thank you for being here. Hey, Dr. Liz, I have a, a question. Um, I recently had a, a, a quick uh, in and out, quick seven hours to an emergency room. Everything's fine. Uh, but uh, there were like 10,000 forms and privacy is important to us. And and then while I was having all my tests taken, I signed up for my chart there. And I'm beginning to think, you know, aren't there some kind of laws? How does that really stand? How protected is my medical information? Good point. Yeah, absolutely. Very important point. Uh, people use the term HIPAA a lot. And I thought it would be interesting to share with our listeners a little bit more about HIPAA. HIPAA, what does that mean? It was a law. It is a law that was originally passed in 1996. I would say we were just starting to see the, the very beginnings of electronic medical records and medicine was going through some big changes at that point. So HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Notice how it doesn't say exactly health information in there. So what was happening is people were realizing that health information had to be revealed to people who weren't doctors. So if I'm a biller and I, or I work for the insurance company, I need medical information, very detailed medical information. So this was the first time to officially formally laid into law protections for us as patients, for our identity. We know that's a huge deal right now. And also our health information. So we've got HIPAA and the other common abbreviation that's used a lot and thrown around a little is PHI, uh, which is private health information, okay? or rather, excuse me, protected health information. Protected health information. What is protected health information under HIPAA? It's very spelled out. When can my medical information be used by others and shared with others? Okay, mm. so it's very specific situations. It is to provide treatment. If I need one of my colleagues to provide treatment, then that is an allowable use of protected health information. If I am the insurance company and I want to make sure that we pay for the treatments, uh, then it's that's an, an, a setting in which it's legal to share the information. To monitor quality of operations. So say within a department and let's say a hospital is monitoring their outcomes. This is a scenario where health information may get shared in order to make sure that the program or the, the doctors as a group are doing a good job. Mm. Okay, that's another. Let's see. Also, there's a few additional scenarios. For example, uh, uh, workers' compensation, uh, if there's a concern involving law enforcement, all right. Mm. Uh, there are situations, including, and of course, we went through this in a very big way with the pandemic, sharing protected health information in a scenario where public health needs to be protected. Yeah. When you hear about cases of measles or you hear about uh, these kinds of specific scenarios uh, that affect public health. Uh, Dr. Liz, I want to I want to interrupt the because I'm sure there's a long list of situations. Yeah, those are the major ask, categories, but you're, yes, for sure. Yeah, I wanted to ask, is there ever a case that, that if you're familiar with the this, is there a case where we could, we, we personally can say, no, don't share that information with somebody? Yes, to an extent, to an extent. So the list I was just saying, those are not usually scenarios where you can say no. 
All right. However, what you will see and art, what you were signing your life away, I know exactly what you mean. I went to a hospital setting recently just to have some x-rays and same thing, just signing and signing and signing. One of those is that you are aware the privacy policies have been shared with you. That was definitely one of the uh, signatures that you did. Yeah. There are also scenarios, for example, spouses and immediate family members. It's usually considered that the information can be shared with them. And I, in some situations, you can say, do not share with a particular person. It, it tends to be uh, something that's allowed to share with a spouse or an immediate family member. Uh, and if you don't want that, you have to specify. I have to say that I've heard of uh, HIPAA years ago. I used to actually administer health plans for uh, companies as uh, part of my job as an executive. And, uh, uh, and 15, 20 years ago, it seemed to mean something that we couldn't share anything. But I have a feeling that there are so many holes in it that anybody who really wants to get a hold of uh, information probably can, unfortunately. Or, you know, I mean, that's just the way there's so much information on the Internet and everything else. It's hard for me to believe that much information that is going on in your life is ever going to be really, yeah. really secret, even though the concept is good. Yeah. The concept is good, and at least it's there mm -hmm. as a law, as right. a baseline that we can work from. As you said, as things get more digital, it's going to be an interesting challenge as we go forward. Yeah. Sure. Well, nothing's perfect, but it does seem like it was a good idea and is reasonably well administrated. I beg to differ with you, John. There is one thing perfect. If you good, okay. want good up-to-date information that's realistic, tune into us celebrating Act Two when we interview Dr. Liz. Amen. Absolutely. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.